Hi, my name is Annie St. Pierre. Hi, I'm Marianne Farley. I'm the film director of Frima. And I'm the screenwriter and the director of Like the Ones I Used to Know, ou Les Grandes Claques en Français. Marianne. Yes. What is your greatest pride in the film? Mm. That's a good one. It's a good one. I think, I think you know, the subject matter definitely that um, that we're talking about women's rights and that um, this film is meant to protect these rights and and you know spark conversations about this stuff. Um, and I, I think I'm really proud of the fact that people get that when they watch it, that they're really, it's, it's, it's troubling, it's moving, yes, it's, you it know, is. powerful, I think. Yeah. Vos papiers, s'il vous plaît. Oui, monsieur. Je sais que c'est pas confortable, mais essaye de pas bouger, OK? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ah, ah, ah. And it was, it's very different from Marguerite, my other film. Yeah. Uh, where it was the complete opposite. It was like people were moved and, you know, a very soft film, very sweet film. C'était ton petit copain? C'était ma copine, oui. Ah. Whereas Freema is like a tough, it's a tough film and it's, it's definitely not easy. So, but that's what I set out to do. My turn. There you go. If you had to screen your short film before a feature film, which one would it be and oh. why? That's a good question. Yeah, I'm not sure that I'll be able to answer <laughs> really fast. I think that um, curation is something so difficult, mm -hmm. but, but the most interesting is to find um, a film that will um, give more insight to the other one. Mm -hmm. I, I love when um, curators or programmers are finding some film to put together that maybe talk about the same subject, but from another angle. Mm -hmm. So maybe Maria's story, because it's kind of the same subject. It's about mm -hmm. uh, the divorce and mm -hmm. the a broken family, yeah. but it's in the adult angle and more like the end of a love story yeah. also yeah. and you're following the story of the father but there there's still a kid there but it's not like you the film is not um told in the eyes of the kids mm -hmm. and i think with like the ones i used to know we sure have both we have the father and yeah. the daughter but mm, i think that we people are more um they identify themselves. They identify themselves through yeah. through the little girls. Yeah, pers more to the little girls. Yeah. I think. Are you ready? Where's your valise? Papa. What? Well, you're going to find my suit de façon de moi, hein? Ben là, euh, j'ai pas fait tout ce chemin-là pour rien, là. Hein, je veux dire, euh, Noël, euh, c'est peut-être pour être avec yeah, ses enfants. Oui. Jean-Marc, il ira te les porter demain matin. Ils dormiront avec le cousin, c'est tout. OK. It's a great film. Yeah. It's a yeah. great film. It's a really good beautiful film. film. I think that would work, actually. Yeah. Maybe we should call Noël back and say... <laughs> can we? Can, can we? we can, can, you, can the film come out again? <laughs> can we put, like, les grandes claques before? Okay, Marianne, mm -hmm. uh, why did you choose to be in a near future? The reason I decided to, to put the story into the future is really because, um, you know, I wanted to tell women that this is not just something that's in her past, but it's also something that could eventually come to be again. So I didn't want people to say, Thank God we're past that because yeah. I, you know, I don't believe that we are, unfortunately. So, um, so that's why for me it was really important to set it in, into the future. And then there's L'Evénement, the film that came out, the French film um, that won at Venice 
Venice Film Festival, and um, that one's set in the 1960s or 70s. And you know, one of my favorite films is Four Months, Three Weeks, and Two Days, and it's a brilliant film. film. Yeah. And I didn't want Freema to be like the short version of that. So, so that's why for me it was really important to make a different film and to have. I wanted Freema to have its own statement, which is like a call to action. You know, we have to really protect our rights. It's it's happening, unfortunately. And, and it works really. It's Thank a, you. It's a brilliant idea. We can talk about it again. Yeah, <laughs> I've seen it. So it's my turn, yeah, right? It's your okay. Turn. Okay, nice. Any, who are your biggest inspirations when it comes to film directing? Ah, those are tough questions. They're very tough. I'm <laughs> glad you got that one. I just, yeah, I just have all the question of name dropping. <laughs> um, who are you most inspired yeah, by? Yeah, that's difficult. It's, it's difficult. not. It's certainly not just one person. Yeah, I would say Agnès Varda. I think because it's not only her work. It's really her process yeah. also, and I I find that she she did a lot just to erase borders yeah. uh, in yeah. her cinema, borders between documentary and fiction, mm -hmm. and and borders between um, her subject too. Yeah, and I find that really really inspiring. I think that she's uh, and in in all her ages, and mm -hmm. I mean in all her life during yeah. all her life and. She was more about films than career, I think. Yeah. And I think it just talked to me. But I think, and yes, it's also because I began in documentary. Mm -hmm. So I was so inspired by her, even when I was 20 years old, mm -hmm. not thinking about doing fiction in my life. And then, and then when it, um, changed a little and when I was like oh no but I, I want to do this thing and it's not yeah. possible in documentary yeah. I can't control my language as well as if I if I have like the possibility just to say hey stop yeah do it again, do it again. <laughs> <laughs> and, and yes I, I I was still able to find um, things to inspire me in her work so yeah it's like my um, Brain sister. <laughs> your brain sister, I like that. <laughs> okay, my turn to... Oh yeah, it's your turn now. I can't keep up. I'm like, who asked a question? <laughs> what were the biggest challenges while making the film? Hmm. I get asked this a lot. Um, well, you know, we sh we shot outside, you shot outside a little bit as well. During winter. During winter, it's like minus 25. Uh, that was definitely a challenge. I think for me, the biggest challenge was, you know how this goes, you write something and it really works in your mind. You're like, moving truck, it's going to be fine, we'll figure it out. And then you have to figure it out. So so that whole thing where, you know, we had finding the meat and making sure that the meat wasn't going to spoil, that we were going to be able to give it to people, to actually feed people, because that was really important to us. That was a challenge. Um, the whole truck moving as, you know, the stories moving along was really challenging. And we I didn't want the actresses to die from, <laughs> from you know, because it was so cold. Yeah. So, you know, we, we shot in studio and um, thank God, you know, you have crews that have done this before when you haven't done this before. Crews are amazing. Amazing, thank God, <laughs> thank God. You find, especially in Quebec, we're really lucky. We yeah. have great, great people yeah. here. But just the fact that we are having crews Wow. I know, I know. <laughs> it's just, for me, it's a revelation it's every time. It's tough. I think that's what directing is. Like, the bottom line for me is you're on set, you have a million problems come your way and you have to, you have to solve yeah. all these problems, yeah. you know? So, I think that's why you, we have to be quick. And, and at the same time, then your, your head doesn't get in the way because you don't have time to think about it. No. So I think that's where creativity also arises. Yeah, intuition. Intuition and all that stuff. So that's why you prep really well and then you sort of forget everything and you just dive in. So yeah, it happens quite a bit. I, I have to say, thank God. <laughs> if it didn't, <laughs> that, would, that would be difficult, yeah. you know? My turn. In your opinion, what is the most important quality of a film director? Oh. Okay, we can do that fast. Curiosity. Mm. Yeah, that would be, I think, 
the most important quality for me. <laughs> um, just in life in general, mm -hmm. because you, I don't know, you have to keep this fascination for mm -hmm. human, um, for nature, for colors, image, sound, music. Uh, you have to want to know always a little deeper what is under what you're seeing. So you have to scratch a lot of things. <laughs> yeah, you have to go beneath the surface and yeah, scratch, yeah. Exactly, because if you don't do that, for sure, like you will not be able to do mm -hmm. any interesting movies. Mm -hmm. So I would say curiosity. That's a good answer. And even even on the set, like everything is yeah. written, everything is like set. You're going there. There's still something to discover mm -hmm. in every scene and every dialogue. So I would say curiosity. Oh, it's my turn to pick a question for you. I hope it's an easy one. <laughs> Uh, yes, yeah? that's oh, a good one. Okay, good. Define your film in three words. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> that's a hard one. <laughs> oh. So I'm just, I'm just gonna come out with what, it's four words. Uh, I'm, I'm okay with that. You're okay with four? Yeah, okay. I can give you four. Um, I would say, it's a weird answer, but I'm gonna say it anyways. The cold is here would be the words that are so I was gonna go. The cold is near. It's like coming, but it's it's. But that's here. fantastic. You did a sentence. I did. I I didn't ask for a sentence. Just no, three words. Three words. And you give me more. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> I was like, am I gonna say a sentence or three words that have no like connection? Which is why we chose Frima as the title. Frima means a thick fog that turns into ice as it's falling down. Which you know that's why we kept it in French because in English it would be frost, which is too close to frozen. Um, <laughs> but that's how I see this, this whole that's, thing yeah. about women's rights and abortion rights where we're blinded by the fog, but it will eventually turn into ice, which is what's happening in my view with, uh, when it comes to abortion rights. Okay, what do, what do we like most about each other's films? I would say, um... There's many things that I love in your film. Like the, the story, the context, it's bold and it has to be like that. Mm -hmm. um, but the way the, the actors are playing is so delicate and it's precise and mm. it, they make us feel everything that we can see. Oh, well, because I'm gonna say the same thing about you now. <laughs> Again, I could say like, Visually, the film is is stunning, and just like the choices, you know, the, the your, your shots, and that that goes without saying. But there's something so genuine in the acting, and you know, I know that you exactly what you were saying about the the mother. You know, the mother is not like one dimensional. She's complex. She's a good mom. She's you know, she cares for him. At the same time, she's trying to you know create a separation between the two of them. She has this new man in her life. Like all of that is really complex and, and beautiful. There's nothing cliche about any of the characters, which I find really beautiful. And, you know, I think you have that in intelligence. It's more than intelligence. It's also, you know, intuition where you see things that most people don't see. And that's what you're bringing to the screen, which I find incredibly beautiful. Yeah, that was the same thing for the... <laughs> be obsessive. Yeah. Do you want another question? No, do you? <laughs> <laughs> no, so